Yo, what's up, fam? So, what I wanted to talk about right now is the gentrification of America. We see that going on all over the country. Whatever you, whatever city you live in, you can see it going on, especially in major cities. And this is becoming a problem everywhere. I'm noticing how they're starting to gentrify a lot of the urban areas and especially major cities where there's a high black population. You see it, uh, you started to see it in places like in New York, like Brooklyn, Harlem, you know, places like Chicago, Philadelphia, you know, where I am in Charlotte, uh, any any city that has a significant black population, they're uh, starting to uh, gentrify those areas and starting to basically push blacks out. Uh, I can speak to the fact that if you go anywhere downtown, if you go to any city, to the downtown area, look at who works and lives in those areas. And most of these cities are starting to build luxury condos and condos that, you know, only certain people can afford. These cities are starting to only cater to the rich and not the middle class anymore. You see, they've taken an extra step now. Cities used to neglect the poor and only cater to the middle class and the rich. Now they've neglected the poor and the middle class and only cater to the rich. So now they're catering to only one demographic a very small demographic so the the white wealthy class of the, of the country obviously feel like they live in the country by themselves they think they uh, run the country themselves and think nobody else uh, matters so everything is catered to them uh, nothing is normal nothing is regular anymore you don't see any normal or, or regular housing you don't see uh, normal uh, contractors coming in they build these high-rise luxury condos that only cater to the wealthy and what happens is uh, a, a lot of these uh, low-income areas are getting torn down and they're even going into the black areas that were predominantly black and they're tearing down a lot of the housing and they're building high-rise luxury condos there and uh, a big reason why they're able to get away with it, I think, is because a lot of us don't own own a lot of real estate. Uh, a lot of us don't own the homes that we're living in, so we have no say so. So they're able to easily just push you out and bring people in who have uh, no interest at all when it comes to your community. And you have to think about it. Uh, how can you open any type of business somewhere? where you know your community is not even there to serve you so if you go downtown any city you don't see hardly any black businesses on downtown any city uh, cities like Atlanta I, I lived in Atlanta for a while uh, the downtown area had a lot of black businesses at that time now I don't know if they're still there maybe a lot of them still are but not as many as it used to be so what I'm witnessing is a lot of uh, aggressive gentrification and trying to push black people out out of the cities out of the picture pretty much uh, first they uh, gentrify your cities then they they deny you any type of decent jobs or any uh, economic opportunities so you're just stuck living on the outskirts in the ghettos and you know you don't you don't even uh, you don't even get a chance to get a piece of the pie uh, uh, as far as the real city goes you know, there are a lot of people who never go to uh, the downtown area of the city they live. They're just stuck in the ghettos and, you know, they're, they're not getting any opportunities. And I think this is just uh, flat out evil. You know, I hope that something is done about it. I'm definitely going to do something about it, speak up about it as much as I can to our leaders, to our so-called leaders who are allowing this to happen. You know, and these this is happening in black cities. It's happening in black cities where we have black politicians and black mayors and black people on the city council. But what's happening is that they're being bought off by a lot of these contractors and developers.
these contractors come in and they fund their campaigns and say, hey, I give you a certain amount of money to fund your campaign if you allow me to build in your city. And rather than looking out for the best interests of their people, they take the money, of course. And this is something that's getting old. This is old as slavery itself. Black people always selling out their communities. So this is exactly what's going on. And, and uh, you, can, you can imagine what's going on in the cities where there are not a lot of black politicians and there are not a lot of blacks in Congress where we don't have black mayors. <clears throat> and, you know, we don't have a lot of black and we don't hardly have any black governors. I don't know of any black governors right off the top of my head, but uh, even the ones that we do have, I mean, they're selling us out because they're being bought off and they're, you know, they're bought and paid for. So, you know, if whatever city you li live in, just take a look around. Take a look at around at where the blacks live and where everybody else is living. And just ask yourself one simple question. Does the black side of town look like the white side of town or everywhere else? I'm sure you know the answer to that. That lets you know what's actually going on. I mean, because number one, it doesn't even look the same. The neighborhoods, the, the black neighborhoods are not being fixed up at all. You know, they, they leave them neighborhoods to rot while they're building high-rise luxury condos in downtown areas. And so their priorities are out of order. You know, they pretty much 100% neglected people that are really part of that city. So I think that a lot of a lot of whites and a lot of wealthy people really think they can get away with living this way. There's no way society can sustain itself by living like this. You know, uh, your time is running out. And I think that they know that their time is running out fast, so they're doing everything they can to push us out. They're doing everything they can to hold on to what little power and control and wealth that they have. They're trying to actually hold on to it tightly so no one gets even a little piece of it. And, you know, you see it. You just, you can just, you can, it's so obvious, you know. And they're just building all these uh, new, new uh, pieces of construction, new condos, and they're just scrambling. They are just scrambling to keep black folks out, scrambling to keep black folks down. You know, uh, they're really aggressive and trying hard at it. But to be honest, I think that they're failing. Now, I think they're succeeding in, in some degree. But the fact that they're scrambling so hard trying to keep us uh, away from it and trying to keep us from having access to any real wealth and any real opportunities or resources, to me, is kind of puzzling because they already own pretty much everything. But they are just scrambling hard. Uh, in certain cities, I see it, you know, uh, you go to the downtown areas, uh, the business di district, no blacks are working in those areas, you know, those high rise buildings, those high rise buildings and uh, those uh, condos that they're building. There are hardly no blacks in those areas. And this is by design, you know, it's not, it didn't just happen like this. They are aggressively trying to keep us out of the mainstream and keep us uh, marginalized. But as much as they try to keep us marginalized, I would really like us to focus on ourselves so we can build our own uh, communities and build up a black Wall Street in every city. Because if we put our resources together, we could have a black Wall Street in every city. It's just that we most of the time spend all of our money with them. We can take our money and our power away from them and put it back into our own hands. We just have to organize and have a plan to do it. We need certain think tanks to come up with uh, policies and ways to get this done. And it has to be done in an organized way. And a lot of people haven't uh, learned how to do that yet. I think uh, a good thing, a good way to learn how to do it is to get Dr. Claude Anderson's book, uh, Black Labor, White Wealth. And another book he has called Poweronomics. Uh, get it from uh, the harvestinstitute.org. That's the harvestinstitute.org. And those books, the Black Labor White Wealth, tells us how we got into this situation, and Poweronomics tells us how to get out of it. He's the first person since Marcus Garvey 
that actually had a plan to help blacks get out of out of the condition that we're in. So we need to follow that blueprint because right now we have the devil working against us. You know, things are not going to just fall in place. We have to fight for it and we have to earn it. And that's the only way we're going to get it. So until next time, peace.